Welcome to Miss Lovedoll's video on the cell cycle, the life cycle of the eukaryotic cell. Before we get started, make sure you have the supplies you'll need. You need to have your science notebook, a pencil, and some colored pencils. Are you ready? Let's get started. The objectives of this video are to help you understand the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, to explain the steps in the life cycle of a eukaryotic cell, and to help you understand the relationship between DNA and chromosomes. So, the life cycle of a cell. Well, a cell is just another type of living thing, right? And all living things pass through different stages in their life. Reproduction is a characteristic of all living things, so the way a cell reproduces is different depending on the type of cell it is. More complex cells reproduce by mitosis, and that's the focus of this video. Simple cells reproduce by binary fission, and you can look that up on a previous video. So what makes a cell more complex? Well, a eukaryotic cell is what we call more complex cells in biology, and animal, plant, and fungi cells are eukaryotic cells, and protists are eukaryotic cells. The DNA in a eukaryotic cell is more complex than the DNA in prokaryotic cells, and eukaryotes have a membrane-bound organelles which means that the nucleus, the mitochondria, the vacuoles, all the different organelles are contained inside their own membranes instead of having all of these activities take place inside the cytoplasm the way it's done in prokaryotic cells. So what do we mean by more complex DNA in a eukaryotic cell? Well, instead of having a ring of DNA like prokaryotes have, remember when we did that little video the last time we said that prokaryotes had a single ring of DNA? Eukaryotes have strands of DNA, and these strands of DNA condense into chromosomes. The number of chromosomes in different eukaryotic cells is different. So for example, a fruit fly has 16 chromosomes, humans have 46 chromosomes, and this fern right here has 2,880 chromosomes. So it just goes to show that just because you're more complex, like humans, doesn't mean that you necessarily have more chromosomes. So, how are those Cornell notes coming? Here's a picture of my Cornell notes so far. Check yours and compare them to mine. If you don't have most of these ideas written down, then you need to spend a few minutes working on your notes. Press pause if you need to. So how do eukaryotic cells reproduce themselves? Well, that part is in the mitosis stage of the cell's cycle. Interphase is the first stage, mitosis is the second stage, and cytokinesis is the last stage. As you can see, the cell spends most of its time in interphase. Three quarters of the cell cycle is spent on interphase. During interphase, the cell grows. It actually gets a little bit larger. It performs its normal cell functions, and it gets ready for mitosis. To get ready for mitosis, the DNA is copied, and the copies are called sister chromatids. Sister chromatids are held together at the centromere. So let's take a look at what your notes should look like for a drawing of the first stage of the cell cycle, which is interphase. You should have one big cell in your notes. Now this can be on the reflection side or it can be within your notes. Let's draw a nucleus. Make sure everything is labeled. So this is the cell membrane. This is going to be the nucleus. And then inside, we are going to have some different strands of DNA. We just have our little DNA strands all zooming around here, all loose and uncoiled. And one more color just to make it interesting. And that, let's label that. When the DNA is loose and uncoiled, we call it chromatin. And this is a cytoplasm. And one last little structure we want to add in here. 
let's put in a couple of centrioles. Now the centrioles are not in any specific place right now because the cell is in interphase and those centrioles really don't have anything to do until we get to metaphase, or pardon me, until we get to mitosis. The next stage is mitosis, and mitosis is defined as the process of dividing and separating chromosomes into two new cells. There are four phases of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. As you can see, the cell only spends about a quarter of its time in mitosis. How are those Cornell notes coming along? Check yours, compare them to mine, and press pause if you need to. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. During prophase, mitosis begins. Nu the nuclear membrane dissolves and the chromosomes condense into rod-like structures. So you can see over here in this picture, the chromatin is now condensing into individual strands of DNA and the DNA has replicated itself so there each chromosome has an exact copy so let's take a look at what you should have in your notes for a drawing of prophase. So we have our cell membrane again. And this time we're going to draw our centrioles in a specific location because now they have something that they're getting ready to do. So the centrioles are migrating to opposite sides of the cell. In addition, the nuclear membrane, remember last time we drew a nice round nucleus, well now our nuclear membrane is beginning to dissolve. So this is the nuclear membrane. Label all of that and use different colors if you want to so your drawing looks really good. These are the centrioles. I always think they look like little barrels. And then inside the nucleus, something is changing. Remember, remember during interphase, the DNA was all loose and unwound. Well, now our DNA is condensing into the rod-like structures that we call chromosomes. So I'm going to draw myself a few chromosomes, just sort of here inside the nucleus. So we have one, two, let's get a pink one in there. We'll make this one a little bit smaller. And let's see, one more, how about green? There's one more chromosome. So let's use four, just like we did in our little yarn activity. And each chromosome is held together in the center by a centromere. So we're going to label these chromosomes. And then in the center of each chromosome, we have a centro, whoops, centromere, centromere. Okay, um, so that takes us to the end of prophase. Nuclear membrane is dissolving, chromosomes are condensing, and the centrioles are moving to opposite ends of the cell. This is a picture of a duplicated chromosome where the DNA has condensed completely into the rod-like structure. So you can see it's sort of X-shaped. The centromere is in the center, and then each one of these is an exact copy of the other one, and one is called a chromatid, and together they're called sister chromatids. The next phase of mitosis is metaphase. During metaphase, the chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. So you can see them lined up right here in the center of this cell. The spindle fibers also extend from the centrioles and attach to the centromere in the middle of each, cell, of each chromosome. And the nuclear membrane has completely dissolved and it's no longer visible. So let's take a look at what we should have drawn on the, in your notes for metaphase. First of all, draw your cell membrane and then put a couple of little centrioles in here which have now migrated to opposite ends of the cell and you'll notice that the chromosomes which used to be scattered all around inside 
the nucleus have now lined up along the center of the cell or along the equator. So we're going to put one little chromosome there, put another little chromosome here, and attach them in the center with a centromere. And you'll notice that spindle fibers are coming out of the centrioles. And these spindle fibers are attaching to each chromosome right at the center, at the centromere. And they're almost like little ropes, like a mountain climber would use to pull themselves or attach themselves to the side of a mountain. And that's exactly what the centrioles and the spindle fibers are doing with these chromosomes is these little fibers come out and they attach themselves to the chromosomes so that in the next phase they can pull these chromosomes apart and one chromatid goes this way and the other chromatid goes that way. But for metaphase, all we're going to stop right here with the cell membrane. So make sure you label everything in your notes. You should have a cell membrane right here. And then label these the centrioles. And then label one of your little chromosomes. And then these all important guys are the spindle fibers. And that's it for metaphase. The third phase of mitosis is anaphase. During anaphase, the spindle fibers start to retract and pull the chromosomes apart. One chromatid goes one way and the other chromatid goes the other way. Eventually, they end up on opposite sides of the cell. So let's take a look at the drawing for anaphase. Draw your cell membrane and your centrioles on either side of the cell. And then let's put in a couple of spindle fibers. This one's going to come out this way and come out this way. And this one's going to match up coming this way and come this way. So we'll start with those two. And now let's put in a chromosome. We're going to notice that right here at the end of the spindle fiber, I'm going to draw the centromere. And then coming out of that centromere is going to be half of one of the chromosomes. Now remember, the chromosomes used to look like this. And they were all lined up in the center of the cell, and they had the centromere in the center. Well, the spindle fiber has attached to this centromere and is pulling this half of the chromosome back towards this side of the cell. And the same thing is happening on the other side. The centromere is attached to the spindle fiber, and then the chromosome is heading this way back towards this side of the cell. And the same thing is going on with all four of our little chromosomes that we had drawn in here in the, in the beginning. So let's attach this spindle fiber here, and this one has to have a spindle fiber attached, and then over here on this side, we need to have a spindle fiber attaching there, and a spindle fiber attaching there. And these spindle fibers are shrinking and drawing these chromatids back towards opposite sides of the cell. And that's it for anaphase.